This morning, by the special grace of God, we'll be looking at a new topic. Who can remind us the theme we've been discussing about? Our theme for the month, our set time, right? Hallelujah. We've been discussing on our set time. And our test has been from the book of Psalm 102, verse 13. Praise God. Psalm 102, verse 13, which tells us, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. Amen. So the time for your blessing, the time for your harvest, the time for your glory, the time for you to take over has come. So under that, we'll be looking at a topic this morning that I tied to harnessing your harvest. Somebody say harnessing your harvest. Our voices are too low. Can we shout it? Harnessing your harvest. You can do better than doubt. Say, harnessing your harvest. Say it as if you understand it, even if you don't understand. By, before the end of the administration, by the grace of the Spirit of God, you will understand. Say, harnessing your harvest. Now, my test is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. Luke 10. After these things, are we there? After these things, the Lord appointed seventy also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither himself would come. Therefore say thee unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Praise the living God. In the natural, harvest is a time, it is a season of plenty. Harvest is a season of celebration. Harvest time is a season of reward. After you have sowed, after you have watered, after you have protected your seed, everything at the end of the day it now germinates and it starts bearing fruits and this fruit that it bears symbolizes what abundance and what plenty praise the living god we see jesus christ sending his disciples into the field and he called it what the harvest he said it is time for you to go and what reap the harvest because they are what? A seed. Praise the living God. I want us also to open to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 9. 2 Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 10. Second Corinthians 9, verse 10. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food. He that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. I want us to know this morning, that is, it is the Lord that provides the harvest. And also it is the Lord that provides the seed. And every harvest comes with a seed. Every harvest, every blessing that the Lord gives to you as a person, as a Christian, also comes with a seed for you to sow back, for you to plow back. When a farmer harvests his crop, for those of us that have farmed before, or those of us that studied agriculture, or by experience, you know what I want to tell you. 
when he averts his crop, he keeps a certain portion of that same crop he has harvested, and he puts them in a storage barn. Am I right? Now, that crop he has kept, he's saving them so that in the next season, he will have a seed to what? To sow back. And no matter how hungry that farmer or his family or the community becomes, he will not go into that storage barn to take of that seed which he has stored in order for him to what? To eat it. If he does that, what happens? It means that there will be no seed to be sown for the next season. That means hunger is eminent in the land. Are we following? The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. It says, why the earth remaineth? It says, seed time and harvest time. Morning and night and day. It says, Cold and heat, winter and what? Summer shall never what? Cease. What is the Bible trying to tell us? That as children of God, as sons and daughters of Zion, we are always meant to keep what? Sowing. Praise the living God. Now when we talk about harness, harness means to what? To collect. Praise God. It's to take control of something and use it what? Effectively. When we talk about a nest, a nesting is for you to achieve a purpose. Praise God. And we look at the word harvest. As simply stated, harvest is a reward. Harvest is you, what? Taking your fruits. Your bread is your harvest. Praise the living God. Harvest means to what? To gather. If a farmer farms and he comes to a time of harvest and the farmer sees that why others go to take their sickle, to go and reap, to till the soil, to collect their harvest, and he leaves it like that, what happens to the crops? They begin to what? To rot. Praise the living God. In the scripture, the Bible gave us one good understanding about a man called David. David was a man that had the understanding of what giving is all about. At a point, he said, I will not do anything. I will not give anything unto the Lord that will cost me what? Nothing. Praise the living God. So he tells us that for you to harvest, you need to what? To sow. You need to make a sacrifice. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 7, the Bible said there, that it came to pass when God has given David rest from all his enemies. Do you know what it means to have rest? Praise God. How many of us now we have rest? We have rest. Praise God. We have rest. <laughs> Do you know what it means to have rest? Rest means that you are settled. Rest means that you don't have a problem. Rest means that you are so comfortable. Everything you need is right in front of you. You have achieved your purpose. You have your land. You have your houses. You have everything. The Bible said that God gave David rest. And David was sitting in his palace. The Bible said David stood up in the midst of his comfort. Second Samuel chapter 7. And he looked. David said, the ark of the Lord sits, lies in the tent with curtains, and I am here in my house with what? Mansions. He wasn't comfortable. He said, I can't be comfortable, and there is a lack in the house of God. 
Do you know what happened? Because of that thing that David had in his heart, that he wanted to build a temple, praise the living God, he wanted to build a house that the ark of God will come and rest upon. The Bible says that the Lord blessed him. The Lord established a covenant with him and his generation. The Lord told him that because you taught it in your heart to build my house. The Lord told him, say, right from time, before you, all my servants, they've been carrying the ark of the covenant from place to place, from tents to tents, that you alone, you taught to build a house for me. For that reason, I will establish you forevermore. If you read the Bible well, David did not build the house for the Lord. But because of that thought he had in his heart, a sincere thought to give unto God, God what? Blessed him. Praise the living God. Until we come to the importance of that realization of sowing seed to God, we will not experience his manifold blessing. As, it, as the children of God, we need to understand the basic and the simplicity of the word of God. We need to know that seed sowing is the key to unlocking the floodgates of heaven. If you want to be blessed in this life, if you want to be blessed, you must sow a seed. Jesus said unto his disciples, Matthew 16, 19, I have given you the keys of the heavens, of the kingdoms, of the heaven and earth. Say, the keys has been given unto you. So whatever you bind on earth is bind in heaven. Whatever you decree, what shall be established. Now, how can you use these keys? What are the principles to reap? To reaping an overflowing harvest. The principles. Number one, you must sow the seed of evangelism. Can we shout it? Say, sow the seed of evangelism. Sow the seed of evangelism. In the text that we looked, Luke chapter 10, the Bible said that Jesus sent his disciples to go and evangelize. We need to go and sow the seed of the kingdom. We need to go and sow the seed of of the word of God so we can reproduce after our kind. The Bible said that when God created man, he created them male and what? Female. And, not, and when he created them, he told them what? Be what? Fruitful and multiply. Praise the living God. He said, bring forth creature after your own kind. The Bible said the endless expectation of the creature waited for the manifestations of the sons of God, the seeds of God. You have been saved. Many of us have been saved. We have been redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. Now, what we need to do now is to go into the world because we have become a seed for him and go and what avert souls into his kingdom. Praise the living God. There's one scripture I love very well. Proverbs 11.30. Proverbs 11 verse 30. Can we put it up on the screen? The Bible says that the fruits of the righteous is a tree of what? Of life. That the fruit you need to bear is a tree. You must spring forth. And he that winneth a soul is wise. How come we are so comfortable? When they call us to go and evangelize, we see it. Some of us, we find it strange. Some of us, we are so, you know, we are slow to eat. That is one thing we must do. Do you know one thing that evangelism does? Preaching the gospel, sharing the word of God. He brings about both physical and spiritual blessings. There are some special gifts in the Bible 
that if you don't start preaching the gospel, the Lord will not release it upon your life. Praise God. Why? You can't sit and keep receiving the word of God every day. You come to church on Sundays. The pastor preach. You come on Tuesdays. You come for, for, for programs. You come for vigils. And you are being imparted upon. And every day, this, this you know, potentials enter your life. But you don't go out to give it. It's not only within ourselves here. We share the word of God. Because the more you receive... And you become so full, you begin to slow. Praise God. Praise God. Just like we breathe in and breathe out. Can you only breathe in without breathing out? No. Give it out. And the Lord will release his manifold blessings upon our life. Number two. You must be motivated by love. Tell somebody you must be motivated by love. First Kings 17. Verse 7 to 16. The widow of Zarephath. We know that story. At that time, Elijah has declared upon the land that there shall be no rain. And God sent him to a brook. He told him that drink from there. I will send a raven to feed you. At a point, that brook got dried up. And the Lord sent him. He said, go to Zarephath. There is a widow there. Go, I will, I will make her to what? To sustain you. The Bible said Elijah went and he saw the widow. She was gathering firewood. And she called her. Hey, young woman, come here. The woman came. Said, go and fetch me water for me to drink. Say, no problem, sir. She was on her way. He called her back, say, why you are that? Make bread, make food for me to eat. The man say, ah, now there's a problem, deal. Say, sir, you see this food that you saw, you are seeing in my hand. It is the last that I have. I just want to go and cook this food so that me and my son will eat it. After that, we will die. The man say, don't worry, just go. Go and cook that food and bring for me. That God will supply your needs. You will never lack. So go and cook that food. When you cook the food, bring for me to eat first. Oh, do not eat it. Praise God. Can you imagine that? In today's generation, how many of us can actually give to God in the midst of our need? The Bible made us to understand that what that woman did was a pure love for God. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Praise God. Are we there? Hope we are together. Thank you, sirs. He said, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me. Praise God. Let's stop there. Have you ever, have you ever imagined this word that the Bible puts in this place? He said what? Say what? Can you, can you shout it? Can you shout it? How do you prove God? How? He said, prove me. You prove God by acting like him. Praise God. Are we not Christians? What is the meaning of a Christian? God bless you. Christ-like. The Bible says God so loved the world that he what? Gave. You see the principle of giving. He respects no man. Praise God. What do we give? We give our time. We give our money. Praise God. We give our resources. We give love. We give faith. We give hope. These are the things you can give. You give your belongings. When you go out to preach the gospel, what are you doing? 
One, you are sacrificing your time. You are sacrificing your resource. It's a sacrifice. You are going what? To preach the gospel. Praise the living God. David gave in the Bible. Solomon also gave in the scripture. They gave that. When they gave, it made God to stand up to what? To bless them. Some of us, we, we lack blessings. We lack healing. We lack favor. Because of our incapacity. Because we cannot give. If a man loves God, you will not find it difficult to obey those simple commandments of God. There was a time in my life I faced a very huge financial crisis. Very big one. Very big one. And the crisis I faced was enough for me to say I will not do anything for anybody. I will not give at all for any reason. But God helping me at that period, I lived my life as if nothing happened. I never stopped what I was doing. I never relented in giving, even in the house of God. And day by day, Praise God. Just like the Bible tells us that look at the birds of the air. Who feeds and who clothes them? Somehow, day after day, I survived that challenge. I came out of it. And I came out of it strong. And when I look back, it was as if nothing happened. But I tell you, that challenge was a crumbling situation. When I mean crumbling, a, crum a crumbling situation. So there is no how from the sincerity of your heart that you serve God. Giving is service, so hope you know. You come to church every day. You sweep the house of God. You arrange. You take your time to do these things. Nobody sees you. You go home. God is seeing you. Do you know what it means to make the house of God to look neat? Number three, who can remind us of number one? I can't hear you, sirs. You must sow the seed of what? Evangelism. Number two, you must be motivated by love. Number three, you must have a spiritual understanding. Have spiritual understanding. I said to us that the law of giving respects no man, right? You see this harvest we are talking about? We are talking about our set time to enjoy, to reap the fruits. Harvest does not respect prayers. I don't know if you heard me well. Praise the living God. Harvest is only answerable to your seed. It doesn't respect prayers. The Bible says, let's not deceive ourselves. What a man sows, he will what? Shikina. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Anything a man sows, you will reap. You go to school, you decide not to read your book. You decide to play around. In time of examination, can you recall anything? What do you want to recall? If you pray, will there be an answer? Answer me now. No, this is reality. That's why I said it respects no man. What will happen? You'll be blank. The next thing is for you to start looking for answers from your neighbor. But if you read and study, and probably you get to the exam hall, and it skips, and you pray, say, Spirit of the living God, give me the spirit of remembrance. What happens? comes upon your life. It's not a magic. 
at that time, self, you can be looking at the sky. The spirit of the Lord as a Christian will be writing your answers for you because you studied. But when you don't study, don't deceive yourself. Nothing will come. So some of us, we can go ahead to deceive ourselves. We did not read and we prayed. Answer came from heaven. My brother, that is what fallacy. Praise the living God. The work of prayer is to hasten your harvest. That is what prayer does. You know you have already sown a seed. Praise God. Now what has prayer done for a man that has studied in the exam hall? He has made him to remember what? Quickly. Praise the living God. When a farmer sows, he, seed, he plants his seed on the ground. If he goes home and comes back after four months, what happens? He will not see anything. No. What will he see? He will see weed. Praise God. He will see what? Weed. He will see brown, chaff. He will see every, but when he comes every morning and waters, praise God. He comes the next day. There's a weed growing. He cut it off. Praise the living God. You know, he waters, he prunes. At the end of the day, when it's time for him to yield, he's going to what? He's going to re yield. So your harvest is tied to your seed. And your seed is tied to God. Praise God. It is your seed that is tied. That is the covenant you have. So when you pray on your seed, your seed yields for you. Praise the living God. Praise the mighty Jesus. Prayer removes what? Adversaries. In the book of 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9, Paul said something. He said, a great door, not only a great door, an effectual door has been opened unto me, but there are many, what, adversaries. So what do you do? You pray, and God, what, removes those things that stunts your blessings. Praise the living God. The Bible says, I, I set before you an open door that no man can, what, can shut. So your doors are already open. The Lord has said blessings unto you. In the book of Psalm 132 verse 15, the Bible says, I will abundantly bless the provision. Praise God. I will abundantly bless the provision. Now the question is, what if there is no seed? How will there be a provision? Praise God. Praise the living God. If there is no seed, how will there be a provision that God will bless? And now it tells us, which is number four, that we must be willing to sacrifice. Say to somebody, you must be willing to sacrifice. I can't hear your voices. You must be willing to sacrifice. Proverbs 24 verse 33 says, a little sleepy. A little slumber, a little folding of the hands, so shall your poverty. The Bible says it is your soul. Read the Bible now. Say, so shall thy poverty. It is not the poverty of God, it's not the poverty of your neighbor. You that sleeps, you that fold your hands, you that keeps procrastinating. You have a contract you need to deliver. You need to set tax day by day for you to fulfill that contract. You could not fulfill it. Now that you not fulfill it, will they refer you? Will there be referrals? No. Will there be opportunity for another one? No. Praise the living God. So we need to sacrifice our time. If you are a student, you need to study. Praise the living God. Praise. If you are a farmer, you need to go to the farm, till the ground and plants. Praise the living God. These are the things we need to do. Some of us, yes, we are graduates, but at the end of the day, we, start, we sit down, we're not doing anything, you know, you're not adding to yourself value. You are, as far as some of us, see, I was one person, 
that was lazy about submitting CVs when I graduated. When my mate was submitting 30 CVs in a month, going for 100 interviews, I found out that it was difficult for me. But what happened? I was trying to do other things. Praise God. I was doing business. When I was serving in Medugri, I went to a market called Muna Market. I was buying beans from the village, going to sell. Praise God. So the, I, I, at the point, I discovered that, oh, it seems that your IQ is in something else. So this one that you cannot do this. What else are you doing? If you don't have talent for something, God has blessed you in another, in another level. Don't sit down. Don't fold your hands. Stand up and what? And move. If you need to go and learn a trade, you go and learn a trade. Don't say because you are a graduate. How can, me, how can I be a graduate? A master's degree order, I wouldn't. And you sit and fold your hands. So we need to sow. The Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters. In many days, that means if you invest, praise the living God. Some, some people, they are very intelligent. They study the past. It may take them time. But one day when they work, when the employment comes, in many days, you will see them sitting in topward positions. John 12 verse 24 says, Except a grain of corn falls to the ground and die, it abided alone. We are young people. Listen. As you are seated in, the, in this place, do not have the mind of a solo, the spirit of Ejibo. I am in this location, so therefore I cannot go beyond this boundary. My brother, you can be in this place and discussing with men that are having meeting in Ikoyi Club. Praise God. Is it not possible? You can sit here. And you, you are discussing with them. It is what, what you have on your inside. Do not limit yourself to your background. Some people will say, my family is poor. Praise God. We, we all of us, we started somewhere now. Is it not from Adam and Eve? Praise the living God. We came from the same background. You can break every boundary. God is ready to establish you. God is ready to establish your business. God is ready to give us divine promotion. God is ready to turn our health around. He's ready to give us divine capacity. Only if we know how to sow to him. Look around you. Look around the church. You will see a need. Look into the eyes of your neighbor. You can wipe a tears. But sometimes we just choose not to. We choose not to. The Bible says, my God shall supply all your needs according because he is there to supply them. Until we are ready to give to God in the midst of our needs. In the midst. Because most of us, we are so calculative. <laughs> we calculate so much. And because of that, we don't give again. Praise God. Until you are ready to give to him in the midst of those needs, you will not experience his manifold blessings. Give willingly. Give freely. Give bountifully. The Bible said it. Say, do not give what? Sparingly. It means that if you want God to bless you plenty, you must what? Give something that takes something out of your bowels. There are some ministers in this church. At times I tell them, I, I, I wish, I pray to be like you. I know a minister that I've given up to five persons. Job employment. Employment. I say, wow, that is capacity. There are some ministers that are employing people working in their own organizations. Don't say I have nothing to give. Praise God. Don't say that. That little, somebody say little. It means a lot. Little. Praise God. The church wants to get something that will favor everybody in the house. 
give that one naira. By the time everybody gives that one one kobu, it will amount to something. Now, where can you give? Deuteronomy 14, verse 22, the Bible says, He will show us an appointed place where He has put His name. There you can go and serve Him. There you will give unto Him. Now, for us, the appointed place is the house of honor. Praise God. It's the house of honor. Some of us in this place, we are here serving God and we are going somewhere else to give our tithe or special offering. We will say, I have a spiritual father. Who doesn't have a spiritual father? Who? You are in the house of your father. You are serving. You come to church every Sunday. You come on Tuesday. You come on. And when it is time to give, when God has blessed you, you carry the offering or that tithe. And you say you have a mother church. So what we run, um, what, what we run, what, praise God. <laughs> Thank you. What we run the Father's church. What we run it. Give your tithe. Give your offerings. Give it in his house. Praise God. As we conclude. Evangelism is important. The Bible says, go ye into the world and make disciples of all nations. You will need to worship God. We need to worship him. That is another form of giving. In spirit and in truth. The Bible says, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of what? Season. The Bible, made us, the Bible tells us to share amongst ourselves. You see, may the Lord help us to understand the simple things about the scriptures. The Bible made us understand that the disciples... They share things in common. Praise the living God. It is in communal blessings the Lord lifts us up. I can't be in the midst of five friends or ten or ministers. And God is making this one head of his department. God is making this one a business mogul. God is establishing that one and that one. And I will not be part of that blessing. Is it possible? No. Let the blessing flow. I want us to rise on our feet. We are talking about harnessing our harvest. The Bible says that the harvest is ripe. There is a need in the house of God. There is a need to go and win souls for the kingdom of God. Of recent, we started a move for evangelism. We should not let it die. We need to go and preach the gospel and win souls unto his kingdom. I want us to open our mouths and begin to talk to the Lord. Say, Father, by your power, reveal to me the blessings of my harvest. Teach me how to give in your house. Teach me how to sacrifice for you. Teach me how to go and win souls unto your kingdom. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Say, Father, the harvest is ripe and the laborers are few. Lord, I want to be among the laborers. If the laborers are few, for them, count me as one of them. Open your mouth. Are you a Christian? Are you a born again from the heart, from your heart? I want you to begin to talk to the Lord right now. Say, Papa, endure me with your power. Endure me with your grace. Endure me with the strength. The strength to preach the gospel. The strength to win the, 
to win people into the, your kingdom. The Bible says, and you are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Are you ashamed of his gospel? Open your mouth and begin to ask for divine empowerment. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. I need divine empowerment from you, oh God. Give me that divine empowerment. Give me that divine empowerment to give my time for your service. To give my resources for your service. To give unto the house of the living God. Open your mouth and pray this morning. Say anything connecting my life with failure. I can't hear our voices. Say any power connecting my life with failure. You are a liar. Aspire by fire in the name of Jesus. Any power connecting my life with failure, you are a liar. Aspire, aspire, aspire. 